Members, this is a bill uh, that seeks to add to our symbols in the Tennessee Blue Book. Uh, we've got state songs, state poems, uh, state reptiles, but we have no official state books. And what we have, are doing this morning is to recognize the, the rich cultural, literary, and political heritage of our state dating all the way back to its beginning uh, on June 1st of 1796. So again, we just have a random amalgamation of books that you want to put as our state books um, that you said they represent the diversity of Tennessee. Only one author is black. Only one author is a woman. So this is not diversity. This is just you trying to promote a, a certain narrative and a certain um, dominant narrative of what Tennesseans should be. As uh, Chairman Farmer has already advised everyone, this happens to be the anniversary of the birthday of our first president, George Washington, whose farewell address to the American people is the very first book on the list that we seek to add via this bill as a Tennessee official book. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I'll renew my motion. Representative Bolsover renews his motion. Any discussion on the bill? Representative Jones, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, this bill is, this seems random and it's not, it, it, does, it seems like a random amal amalgamation of, of books that maybe it's your personal favorite books, but George Washington did not come from Tennessee. He did not live in Tennessee. And that's the, the book you just mentioned, making a state book. It doesn't really make sense to me. We have great authors here, people like Ann Patchett and uh, Cormac McCarthy, people who are literary giants in Tennessee. And it just seems like they would be a better fit since they're actually Tennesseans than some of the books you've listed. Can you explain also how you came up with the list? Did you just, are these your favorite books to read personally on your leisurely time? Like, how did you come up with this list of books? Representative Bolso. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first, George Washington is on the list because he gave his farewell address in September of 1796, which obviously was just three months after Tennessee became a state. So his connection to the state of Tennessee is obviously very direct. But uh, the list is something that recognizes the diversity of our citizenship over the course of its history from 1796 all the way up to the present. You know, we've got uh, Pulitzer Prize winning authors from all over the state. Uh, we've got on the list, for example, uh, Professor John Meacham, uh, his work, American Lion, a biography of President Andrew Jackson. We've got James Agee uh, from Clark, from uh, Knoxville, excuse me, uh, whose work, uh, A Death in the Family, is a Pulitzer Prize winning work. We also have Robert Penn Warren uh, from Clarksville, whose work, uh, All the King's Men, also was a Pulitzer Prize winning work in uh, 1947, later became an Academy, Awarding, uh, Academy Award winning motion picture film. Uh, so we've got uh, books from Memphis, uh, including uh, Shelby Foote, uh, The Civil War and Narrative. Uh, we've got Alex Haley uh, from Henning, uh, Tennessee, in, uh, in West Tennessee, a uh, book, uh, Roots on the list. Uh, we also, of course, have got Dolly Parton's uh, Coat of Many Colors uh, from Sevierville, Tennessee. Uh, so we've got uh, books from uh, Tennessee authors from across the state. They're Pulitzer Prize winning works. They're works that have been recognized as having significant liter literary merit uh, over the course of a very long time. Representative Jones. So, so I think that's a yes. These are your favorite books to read in your leisure time. Thank you. Um, you said that these are Pul Pulitzer Prize winners from Tennessee. One of the books listed is a Bible. Did the author of the Bible come from Tennessee? Representative Bolso. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. No, but uh, the, the Aiken Bible is obviously a Bible that's printed here in Tennessee. Three of the remaining original five copies of that Bible are here in Tennessee. It's the only Bible that uh, uh, the Congress, the Continental Congress, ever authorized the printing of back on September the 12th of 1782. And it dovetails nicely with uh, George Washington's farewell address to the American people, where he recognized religion and morality as our two, quote, indispensable supports of our political prosperity. Uh, the fact that Congress recognized the printing of the Aiken Bible is a historical fact. It's not a devotional fact. So it fits nicely into our country's founding. It obviously fits nicely uh, with uh, Alexis de Tocqueville's work, Democracy in America, which building on George Washington's uh, work is farewell addressed to the American people, wrote that you know, all society depends, in, in some part at least, on a set of shared beliefs. And uh, the Aiken Bible was on there for that reason. Representative Jones. So that answer is also no. Thank you so much, Representative Bolso. There's so many great authors. I think that all of our districts should have a say on what is going to be the state books. But again, we know this is going to pass. We know that this is just 
you know, some type of brand standing. Good luck on that. Um, but I think that it's wrong that we are putting these books here that do not represent Tennessee values, things like the Civil War narrative, things like an Aiken Bible. Um, we have people of all faiths represented in the state, and yet we're trying to slip in that as a state book, the Bible as a state book. That's what this is really about. And so also one of the books listed is Roots. I hope you watched the movie or read the book, and you'll see that that's a book about critical race theory. It's about enslavement. It's about a, a family being um, terrorized by slavery and Jim Crow. So that's a book that I think is important for Tennesseans to read during this Black History Month is Roots by Alex Haley. I thank you for promoting critical race theory in our state because it's really important that our, our students and, and, and Tennesseans know that there is a history of systemic racism um, in our state and in this nation. So thank you for adding that book and making sure that we all vote to support critical race theory here in Tennessee.